The next speaker is Mrs. Anita Gurumurti, Executive Director, IT for Change. Respected colleagues and dear friends, most of us who come back to the IGF year after year share a dream, a dream that the internet as a cherished innovation can make possible a society that's free and equal. With 10 IGFs behind us, we need to ask ourselves how well we have done. Let's take access. Over 40% of the 7.5 billion people on this planet are connected. However, we are told that connectivity rates are slowing down. But this may not be a cause for worry. The network will get to the last woman anyway. Never mind if it is rudimentary and of poor quality. Never mind if it is zero rated. A global, immersive, invisible, networked computing environment built through the marvels of the cloud, massive data centers, and proliferation of smart everythings will soon be upon us. The world will be connected by 2025. My submission as we begin our deliberations on inclusive and sustainable growth at this IGF is that since 2005, as we have been busying ourselves to bring access to all, a mission creep has overtaken us. A totalizing net of surveillance has annexed the planet rapidly enfolding society and sociality. The unfreedoms of the internet are not just about exclusion, but the despotism of a tireless net that enslaves us as subjects of a datafied world. There was a time when those who could manipulate media manipulated elections. Now algorithms are taking over electoral processes and the media. Welcome to post-truth on the post-human planet. The primary problem before us is not a problem of trust, as we are told in every other internet report, but that of greed. In digital capitalism, it is cheaper to give access to people than leave them alone. And so, as we stand by watching, the internet is becoming a rapacious instrument of capture. It is the basis of networked individualism, the motor of a consumptive society where the race for big data co-opts us as willing slaves of limitless goodies. From a predatory internet, the path downhill can only be a society that self-cannibalizes. The second problem is that we have forfeited the opportunity that the digital revolution brought us to build a technology of memory that can radically change the power structures of society. The history of every civilization is about its technology of memory. As social memory and cognition are increasingly centralized through the databases and algorithms of state and corporate surveillance, we see a crisis of extreme alienation and unprecedented inequality. A world that is fully networked as things stand can neither be sustainable nor inclusive. 2025 is unlikely to be raceless, genderless, castless or classless. This brings us to the third problem. The digital phenomenon is invariably cast as post-political, as an autonomous force that is best left alone, untarnished by human intent. But inclusion presupposes the rule of law. As the internet redefines institutions globally and locally, it dislocates the boundaries of existence, existing jurisprudence. To pass the test of equality and inclusion, the network data structures scaffolding all institutions need a new philosophy and signs of law and justice. The current paralysis of global internet governance is unsustainable. As the global network finds its way into reality, augmenting it through embedded code and remote control, there is a huge loss of local autonomy. The Internet's logic is inherently irreverential of territorial jurisdiction. The absence of a democratic international platform to address public interest in times of algorithmic tyranny reflects a monumental crisis of governance. A private platform floated by the top six digital corporations named Partnerships on AI, 
to benefit people and society, is all set to formulate best practices on artificial intelligence technologies. Industry standards do indeed have a role to play, but an internet that can be individually empowering, collectively enriching, and ecologically restorative is possible only through a democratic rule of law that can guarantee the mechanisms of accountability in global governance. It's time we moved in this direction of forging a global digital compact. The dialogic space of IGF is indeed a unique venue for public deliberation, but to complement the IGF, we need a robust political process to develop global norms and policies for the internet as required by the Tunis agenda. The task for civil society is cut out. Unless social movements can come together to reimagine an alternative internet, one that promotes diverse universes, another internet will not be possible. Our wisdom is getting colonized. It is time for a new politics of internet governance. At the risk of sounding techno-deterministic, I would like to say to you all, if we can save the internet, we may perhaps be able to save the planet. Now, let's look to our neighbor and begin a conversation. Do they know there is a question here? Do they understand the now or never imperative? Friends, before I say thank you, I would like to lend my voice of support to the statement issued by my Mexican civil society colleagues during the IGF about their human rights concerns. I believe that the internet must be protected as a bastion of democracy. It cannot become an instrument to undermine human rights. Now I say thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Gurumuthi.